Hello, my friends. I was paired up with a meta partner and I had several calls with them and I want to talk to you about what I learned in my calls with them. I had my meta partner for two months and I want to talk about what I asked in those calls and what I learned. This is just my experience and I can't speak to what everybody's experience on Instagram is and on meta platforms, but I personally learned a lot and I want to share what I learned in those calls with you. If you enjoy this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel so that you can see more content like this. I love being able to make informative content for you and to share what I learned in my process being on social media. So if you enjoy this type of content, I would appreciate if you subscribe and turn on notifications so you can see more videos like this one in the future. I only have a couple of spots left on my trip to Japan. It is almost fully booked. I am so excited to meet you all and to go on an adventure together in Japan because I've never been and it's gonna be literally amazing Japan in the fall with like-minded artists and with a guide. It's gonna be literally incredible. So I'm so excited for that. It's gonna be linked right at the top of my description. I'm so excited that this is happening and this is such a dream come true for me. I cannot wait for it. So about my experience, I had two calls with my meta partner as well as access to a live stream Q&A type of event where they talked about monetization on the meta platforms. I didn't feel like any of the information that I was being told was groundbreaking or anything that I didn't know. However, I did have a lot of questions myself personally and so I asked specific questions and I received answers answers for my questions and so I really want to share what I learned. I took notes during all of my calls and so I have my notes here on my computer. I am going to first talk about posting schedule because this is the thing that I wanted to know most about and there is so much information and misinformation and myths and theories on posting schedules and what is best for Instagram. This is what I was told, so I can't say that the algorithm is still gonna be like this in several months, but at this time, this is what I was told for my channel. The best way to post is to post consistently on a specific schedule for each day of the week. For example, if you want to be posting three days a week, choosing let's say Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, having those specific days every week where you post content is going to push your account further with the algorithm. Your account will be distributed to more people. This means that if you're posting six times in one week and then two times in the next, your account is not going to be distributed and pushed quite as much as an account that has steady scheduled content. There's no reason to be pushing out a ton of content one week if you cannot maintain that same schedule. So if you can only afford to post once a week, choosing a specific day of the week to post is gonna be so much more effective than posting a lot one week and not at all for the next couple of weeks. This is both encouraging and discouraging because depending on the type of content you make or the type of person you are, you have to be so organized in the fact that you want to have these posts scheduled ahead of time because because if you're missing your days when you're posting, you're gonna be inconsistent on the algorithm and your account will not be distributed and will not have quite as much reach as it could have. To this answer, I had a question of, does it matter what time of day you post and what type of posts you post on the days that you are scheduling to post? If you post Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday? Can you post a carousel on Monday one week and then a reel on Monday one week? Or does it always have to be that Monday is carousel day? And the answer to this is it doesn't matter what type of post you post as long as you are consistent with your posts. Carousels and reels are distributed in two different types of ways. Carousels are distributed to your existing audience that is online at the time. And reels are distributed to new audience members as well as consistent followers. Reels are being pushed so they will be distributed on the explore page much more readily than carousels will be. However, if you're trying to post a carousel, it is important to know what time of day your audience is most active and to post around that time, you're going to see the highest engagement in that time. However, if you want to post Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and you want to post a carousel, post the carousel on Monday, Wednesday, or Friday at your peak engagement time so that you can have as many people view your post and interact with it. Just to reiterate, this means posting six days a week, seven days a week is not necessary for your channel to be growing. Consistency is key and it's almost how on YouTube, if you have a consistent schedule, you're going to start to gain more views regularly because audience members expect you to post on specific days. I think with this information, it would be good to announce to your audience that you have specific days that you post or to have blank Mondays or blank Wednesdays so 
that people can expect to see your post and look forward to it. The next thing I asked about was hashtags. There are so many people that have so many opinions about the types of hashtags you should post, how many, where to post them. What I learned, and this is from my notes, is that Hashtags are not going to push your content, but rather organize it in places that it might not have been found in the past. So using three to five specific niche hashtags that will sort your content for people that are specifically searching up those hashtags, it's going to aid you in the long run. It doesn't matter if you're posting your hashtags in your caption or in your comments, it depends on whatever you'd like, but posting in your comments is a little less unsightly. It does not affect your engagement either way, but I just would choose personally to post in my comments because that way my caption could look clean and crisp and just look nicer in general. I'm a remote artist. I don't do fairs in my town or I don't really do any work in my area. And so I asked if posting hashtags that are location specific, if that is something that is beneficial to me as a remote person. The answer for this one was, as you would probably expect, if I'm trying to get any work in my area or I'm trying to be known for the area that I live in, you can be posting specific hashtags with your location. For example, I am a Virginia-based artist, so I could utilize the hashtag Virginia Fine Art or Virginia Illustration, and that could set me apart in a community with other Virginia artists. However, this is all up to you about the type of work that you'd like to receive, if you'd like to do anything local, or even if specific campaigns are looking for East Coast artists or Virginia artists, you know? So this is completely up to personal preference. It depends if that's a niche you want to be included in. The next question I had was about reposting reels, if it's okay to repost reels and how that all works. The answer I received was, it seemed very PC. What I was told is the best practice is not to repost reels. I think it's technically not allowed to completely copy and paste a reel that you have already posted. The distribution and reach could be less effective effective than a new reel. Something else that I was told is that people that have already seen the previous reel might be upset and not interact because you are reposting something. For my personal experience, I have reposted reels in the past with new audios and new captions and I found that nobody in my audience has been upset about it because I'm reposting reels that I posted several months ago that you'd have to scroll so far down to actually see, so it's nice to be refreshing this content. Information I received on the call was different from my own personal experience, however, I am changing the reels technically. I'm using new audios that are fresh, I'm changing the captions, and something that I was told was that creative tools can change a reel that you have posted previously previously and make it fresh and interesting again. So if you're adding any kind of value to the same filmed content by adding tips and tricks or changing the topic that you're talking about for the reel, that can make it more effective and make it new and fresh. When it comes to reposting reels or even creating new reels, using in-app text and creative tools is going to distribute and push your reel to your audience members and beyond. Some people have said that you have to completely edit your reel in the Instagram editor for it to be distributed, which I believe is false. I think if you do some minimal editing and use Instagram specific captions and text, I think that will push your reel and distribute it to new audience members without having to worry about editing the entire thing in the Instagram editor. Some people have beautifully edited and complex reels and those do really well. I think it's important to just use some of the creative tools that Instagram offers so that you can show that you're making content for this specific platform instead of mass producing and posting for every single platform. I think that is reasonable and understandable. Any video that you copy and paste to TikTok, Reels, and Shorts without any kind of alterations is not gonna do quite as well as if you cater it for the app. For example, I have been posting YouTube Shorts exactly the same as I've been posting Instagram Reels and they have not been doing as well as Reels because when I say how to draw hair in 10 seconds on Instagram, people love it. They think it's so cool to see a snippet of my process. On YouTube, because I'm used to posting very informative videos, I say how to draw like curly hair in 10 seconds and I don't explain the process, people are pissed in the comments because they're like, so where's the tutorial? It's so funny because the platforms have such different users in my opinion and so I've learned my lesson in the fact that the content I post on shorts is gonna be different from the content I post on reels, but I can still use that same footage just adapted to the platform that I'm posting on. The last couple of things I'm gonna talk about are stories, lives, verification, and then some miscellaneous things that I learned. First, let's talk about stories. Best practice is to post every day on stories, three 
to eight stories a day spaced out in your day is better than posting all, let's say eight slides at once. The reason for this is that if somebody is casually opening their Instagram several times a day, if you're intermittently posting a story every hour, two hours, you can show up right at the top of their stories feed and keep yourself in the forefront of their mind. If you're posting all eight stories at once, maybe they'll open Instagram at once, watch all eight stories and not think about you for the rest of the day. But if you're posting three times a day, several hours in between, you can still stay in the front of their stories and they'll be interested to keep up with you as the day goes along. This is super common sense. This is what I was told. I'm just gonna relate with you personal updates, funny things that are happening in your life, in your studio, showcasing your process for creation. These are going to do well on stories because people can see a glimpse into your life and into your character and so people enjoy seeing and connecting with that. Having interactive engagement on your stories is also beneficial for your growth. So having question boxes that you post, let's say once a week, twice a week, asking your audience how they're doing, asking them questions, doing Q and A's, or even doing the sliding scales on how much somebody likes the painting that you've created or doing polls on which paintings does somebody prefer. Anything that is interactive will show the algorithm that people are interested in interacting with you, are engaging with your content, and that other people might also so enjoy that same content. Lastly, I asked for my partner's take on lives and you know any information tips that they had for me when it comes to live streaming. What I was told is that lives are for showcasing yourself as an individual. For example, as an artist, I don't necessarily have to be doing a live drawing or painting on a live stream. I can sit down, do a Q&A, do my makeup, you know, just chat with my audience. That will create a connection, obviously, right? Lives will help your engagement in the sense that the more people watch your lives, the more that they will get notifications for those lives, the more they'll show up and those lives will be recommended to other people. The more you give people a chance to interact with with you create scheduled content for them and the more they do interact with you the more you will be recommended to other people scheduling lives once a month or once a week can help your engagement. Two tools that I think are interesting on Instagram live streams are that you can have a mediator as well as you can have a filter on comments for specific words, things that you don't wanna show up. I think this is a great news because I'm an anxious person. I get anxious that if I'm gonna be on a live stream, somebody's gonna say something out of pocket and I'll be put on the spot and won't know how to respond. So if you have any specific concerns, you can filter for those words. The last thing is don't use copyright free music in lives, which is common sense. I feel like we've all experience that where we've been playing just a playlist and then our live shuts down because we've been playing copywritten music. I don't understand what the difference between posting a reel and monetizing it with copywritten music, why that's different from posting a live that has the same music. If you wanna play any music, I would suggest playing something copyright free. My last question was about verification. <laughs> I was told that there is no reason to stop applying for verification authentically now with that paid verification is being rolled out. I personally don't agree with paid verification because as a small business and creator, I don't feel necessarily supported by the support team at times. And I think that kind of sucks that you would have to pay for verification to even receive good support. I've been trying to be verified for several years now and I still have not been verified. So it kind of sucks, but there's no use in complaining, especially when I am still going to be using the platform. I enjoy being on this platform and have an audience that I connect with. So I don't really want to harp on the negatives right now, but what I was told was when applying for verification, look for articles and media that features you, three to five links from websites that do feature you. So this will show whoever is verifying accounts that you are an entity, that people are talking about you, that you're a real person. Apply every 30 days for verification. That is how often the verification checks are being done. And so the more you apply every 30 days on the dot with these articles about yourself, the more chances you will have of being verified, you know, much smaller accounts counts in me receive verification, so I don't think it's based on numbers. I'm hoping to get verified one of these days authentically. The last couple of things that I wanna talk about are miscellaneous. Firstly, let's talk about posting single slides. There's the trend of people posting one image as a reel and the audios will be like, Instagram is prioritizing reels, so screw them. I'm going to be posting a picture as a reel. And I think they're funny. I've never posted a post like that before. And what I learned from my calls is that those are prohibited prohibited on the algorithm and may also not be monetized. So they could hurt your engagement. I don't recommend posting something like that. This is not in defense at all of reels being trending or the changing algorithm, but I just don't believe it's smart to be 
going against the rules of this platform because in the end that's not going to aid you in your growth and I think it's important to remember that the content you create you want it to be quality content for your audience Instagram users and accounts uh, sometimes lose track of the fact that you're connecting with real people and engaging with like real audience members who want a connection with you I feel like a lot of stories and reels and carousels and posts and whatever are like targeted to the algorithm to show their distaste for the changes I think everything in moderation is good I think voicing your concerns about this platform especially when it is your main source of income like myself I think that's important but at the end of the day creating content that is just negative or complaining I don't think that's going to further connect you with your audience I don't think you're putting quality content out there at the end of the day when it comes to the type of content you create just be authentic to yourself and try to connect with your audience I think that'll go so much longer than you know posting facetious things like a picture is a reel because you are pissed at the algorithm I think it's fair that people are upset I'm not saying this in defense of the algorithm or of meta or of Instagram you know I'm just saying this as a person who has been doing this as her her job for such a long time now and you know knowing what works and what doesn't I think focusing on what you're doing right what is working for you and you know changing expanding and growing is important Instagram has been changing from the start it's never been stagnant I think unrealistic to expect that there will be no change and no growth with the algorithm and the way that Instagram works and the internet works that's my hot take at any rate one question I had and that I troubleshooted with my meta partner was why my digital painting reels don't do as well as my pencil drawing reels and as we looked at the content that I created the difference that we saw was that my pencil drawing reels often have in-app text and in-app editing while my digital painting reels often were just a procreate time-lapse that was posted without any kind of editing any kind of text on top of it I think it's pretty interesting to see how the reason that those reels were doing poorly wasn't because of the content I was posting but the type of editing that was being done to the videos I definitely recommend using in-app resources to post, you are going to have a lot more success with your posts that way. And the very last thing I want to mention is that everything that you do is a signal, whether posting on stories, starting a live, you know, having an engagement poll, posting a reel or a carousel, anything you do that receives comments, shares, interactions is going to be distributed more with other audience members, as well as with the people that are regularly interacting with you. If you want your content to be pushed more you have to be interacting more what I learned the most in these calls was that consistency and a schedule is key to success I hope you are not discouraged by the fact that you have to have this consistency I think at any rate it's better news than learning that you have to be posting six or seven times a week on reels or carousels to be successful that being said I did learn that posting on stories most every day is going to be best because it's going to keep you in the forefront of people's minds. You might also be wondering, did I see any change in my account in these two months? And the answer is no, because I've been so busy and have not focused on implementing these changes into my account. It just got so dark. The one difference I have seen is that when I post a carousels, I'm posting them at the height of my audience's activity on Instagram and they have been doing much better. So that's encouraging. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you've heard any of this if you're going to implement any of these changes into your own Instagram. I would love to know if there are any other things that you've learned that are successful for posting for you. But in the meantime, I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for watching this video. Send it to somebody who has an Instagram if you would like to share these tips with them. Subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will talk to you guys in my next video.